notebook. Where is it? That was like down a bit. Oh, there you are. Okay. There. Now that I've got that windowed, I can see what I'm doing. Oh, got a couple of messages. Yep, stream started indeed. So yeah, um, I was at Maddie's, um, I was watching Maddie's stream not too long ago. Yeah, I was spitballing some kind of idea that I'm not sure if it would work now. I mean, if, you know, everybody else is uncomfortable about it, that's perfectly fine. So what's on the agenda tonight? Um, that's the thing. I've been trying to look for whatever game there was to stream. Um, but the most that I've been thinking of is just a simple Mario game. Watch. By the time I announce like whatever title I'm going to try to play, I'm going to get recommended some other like game on a massive like what is it, Desperation or some shit? I don't know. I've always noticed a pattern. Oh, by the way, hi, Myth. Kaboom. If you're happy and, you know, clamp your hams. Is there a way to shrink down this? No. So far, I got 11 people. You're never going to forget that song, are you? No, I am not. <laughs> I just think it's just a cute little tune that you sing. It's funny. It's cute. Then again, you know me. Sometimes whatever it is that I like, I run it to the ground. Fuck, it's warm here. I should go open the windows. Oh, hi, Jesse. So, while that's brewing, let's see, I'm going to go ahead and switch the screen over, so that way anybody who watches this on YouTube can actually uh, read the chat. And already I got somebody saying, hello, fellow Pride Landers. I started something, didn't I? Jesus, what the hell? Ugh. Uh, thank you for hosting, Derek the Brony. Let me, uh... Let me change that problem. For some reason, if I have two screens on in the studio mode on OBS, the notification sound will double or echo, and it's very obnoxious. So, yeah, uh, my apologies for that irritation. Uh, but Derek, thank you for hosting. I'm not going to go point fingers at you because this is a fault of my own. You know, it's my own fault by design. So you sure did start a new trend. Yeah. You know, it was just a name I was suggesting. Like, yeah, you know, if there was a nickname for people who are fans of the Lion King, just call it Pride Lander because that's kind of what they call themselves, um, with, at least in the sequel. Um, I, I think that term is used a lot more often in the Lion Guard. Like, I'll tell you this much about the Lion Guard. The pilot episode, or the pilot movie, it's garbage. I hated it. 
But I did give the show a watch. I still have yet to finish season one. I thought it was pretty good. Like, it's not great. It's not fantastic. But it definitely has a nice sense of adventure that, you know, younger audiences will definitely get a kick out of. And for those who are older, yeah, you have to get used to the fact that this is a show aimed for toddlers. You know, that, that was something I had to get used to. Like, this could have been good on a show for Disney XD. But no, they got to do it for Disney Junior because I don't know. Um, but it is what it is. I'm not going to, you know, dwell on it. Uh, they had a couple of episodes that I actually enjoyed. Uh, the first episode, supposedly, not the pilot, but the first one, where uh, Kion uh, encounters Jasiri, the hyena. And I really love the, um, I really love their song, Sisi Misawa, and how it has a great message to the kids that you shouldn't judge anybody by race. You know, you shouldn't, you know, let your insecurities dictate that and such. Like, they have a way of balancing that out. Um... I think the message that Jasiri was trying to cram into Kion was a little forced. But mediocre dialogue will always be mediocre dialogue. I can get used to mediocre dialogue. Um, Myth Bunny Z. I think the first time I've heard uh, what the term was in The Lion King. When Kova met Kiara, the first... Oh, yeah, that's right. Who are you, Pride Lander? Arr. Yeah, I remember that. Um, but it was also used a little bit more often in the show. Uh, the other episode I enjoyed, I keep forgetting the name of it, but, uh, Kion had to lead a herd of animals to, like, across the, um, they had to go to another place because something happened. Um, and upon doing so, they actually had to cross into the outlands where the hyenas were. And th one of which included a zebra who eventually went pregnant. Um, and that went, that went places. Um... I'll give him credit for that. For a show that's aimed for a younger audience, it definitely knows how to take certain risks. And they do it in a very balancing way. Um, and last but not least, I like the episode where Simba gets stuck in a ditch and both he and Bunga have to figure out uh, a way out of there. Like, they have to go under some kind of cavern. Obviously, they're both against each other and I don't blame Simba for it. And more than halfway in the episode, they started singing Akuna Matata. Now, even though I'm not a fan of Akuna Matata, I like the fact that they made a reference back to that because, spoiler warning, I did not like Sukazama. Like, I did not like the song. I thought that how it started where Bunga said, oh, it's not about Hakuna Matata, it's about Sukazama," just felt like a middle finger to people who loved Hakuna Matata. Like, I don't think, like, obviously that wouldn't be the real intention, but it just rubbed me the wrong way. Um, but the fact that they used Akuna Matata also brings back memories of Simba, and I like that. Um, there's probably a uh, few other episodes that I legit enjoy. Like, there's very few episodes I thought were morally problematic, like one or two. But if this is the pace and they're going so far, I like what they did. You know, I'm not going to sit here and complain about, you know, how it's not the way I imagine with The Lion King, because... That's just coming off as an entitled angry fanboy, and I'm not going to continue being like that. you got to mature and accept the fact that, you know, the creators of whatever it is you're a fan of, they have their decisions. And what their decisions are, it's just a matter of how you cope with it, you know? Darla Dimples from Cats Don't Dance and Baby Dolls from Batman. There are two dimple care. I don't even know what the fuck you're talking about. Uh. Uh. Um... So the game I'm thinking about playing um, in the stream, it's it's just going to be a simple Mario game. I mean, I did it last year. I did it the year before with Mario World. Question for Golden Fox. What's your favorite kind of pickle, including favorite style in which they are cut? Oh, that's a tough question, Myth. <laughs> I'm open to pickles of any sort, whether they're sliced or they're relish. Uh, I, no, not relishes. There's, there's a name for them, but they're like diced up into tiny cubes. Um, I also don't mind that they have, like, those really long stick slices. Like, I don't mind eating those. Um, I'm going to hold the thought on that, Jesse, because I don't know if Maddie is going to respond or not. Oh, fuck, I left her. I left her, I left her stream call, uh, not stream call, I left her stream video because I didn't want it to interfere with, um, uh, with this particular stream, and I can't run the risk of, like, having this awkward, like, 
interception sort of thing, or no, inception, sorry, this weird inception sort of thing going on, um, if at some point Maddie does come, okay, I'll, I'll put it this way, if by any chance Maddie comes, and let's say she commentates in the chat box, or she goes to contact me privately, um, I'll see what I can do to, um, get in contact with her, and sort out the idea that I was spitballing, um, let's see, do you offer commissions to make custom old cold one vectors for anyone? Honestly, I wouldn't want to do that because upon doing that would involve using your OC, which is used by like created by somebody else and getting paid to do something from somebody else's work. That doesn't seem right. Um, and that's something that I, I think, uh, okay, I'm not going to say that it should be a standard but it's something I'd prefer not to get uh, the idea of, you know, using somebody else's work just so that you can create your own material or whatever it is somebody else wants to make from their said material. And even then, there's only so much names of Cold One products that you would think of or drink products that you would name off of, uh, most of which is based off what other people's drinks uh, they like. Uh, with, uh, with Solar's, he always opens up a can, a can of soda, and that can be pretty much anything. So I just really just named it a generic soda. There's my character, and in order to stand out differently, I just named it a different flavor, and that was the cherry thing. And for shits and giggles, I just used the Playboy Bunny one, and it's stuck with me now. Um, but when others started doing it, Ellie said that she liked drinking um, ginger ale, and that's where you, that was the name, Ginger Ale Yora. And... Uh, with Jesse, she said that there was something about, she said she liked dragon fruit stuff, uh, or something involving dragon fruit, and I had to use my imagination to work with something, and I thought about doing an energy drink in contrast to, like, soda or ginger ale, because with Kieran's, they also have this energy to just, like, light up and fire, you know, and I thought that would just be a connected idea, so, uh, no, I wouldn't want to go as far as to make, uh, cold ones as commissions, and even then, it's there's only so much that you can work with. And with the enormous amount of people, hey, can you do my uh, drink of this and that? And it would just have this repetitive use of just having, you know, having the same product. Hold on. Ah, oh, fucking hell. Am I going to third? Is there a third? No? Watch, it's going to sneak up on me. And because dragon fruit energy, I can... Make a common writer reference. I love the idea of Golden Bless You, Gazuntide, Kazuntide. Uh, so, which simple Mario game will we see? Uh, Mario 2, aka Doki Doki Panic 2. Bless You times 2. Thank you, Crimson Rain 1199. Dragon Energy Arms. Uh, thank you, Jesse. You're the same Bless You to me. Um,. Oh shit, my coffee is sitting there. I gotta get it.
Now, let's see. Uh, what did I miss? Is there going to be another Cup of Joe bit? Um, shit, I forgot about that. Like, okay, there's like a thing or two that I wanted to talk about. Um, but I've been so focused on, like, okay, I'll tell you this much. As far as making projects go, I'll definitely, you know, confess this much. Let me first start a stream protocol. I've lately been on a roll with making highlight reel after highlight reel after highlight reel. Um, MLP reviews, there's actually some that are ready to be edited. Um, so hopefully when I get those finished, I can have it ready for December. So that way I'll have a lot of content to show out where, uh, you know, there, there's a lot of content over the course of December. Um, but yeah, uh, I've, I've been on a roll with highlight reels. I've been very hell-bent on getting the uh, rest of the Lion King marathon taken care of. Because the thing about, the thing that took me so long to work on Lion King 2 is that first of which I've been, a, I was on a very big uh, writer's block for some reason. There was so much to talk about, so much to lay out, and I wanted to make sure that I would make it coherent and well-paced. Oh, what the, what the hell was that? That was perfect timing. <laughs> Seriously, what like, did up, you just dude? slap the microphone? What the fucking shit biscuit was that? I fuck, I high five my own hands. <laughs> you high five yourself. My hands. Yeah, I'll bet a fucking uh. hurt you ass white. <laughs> <laughs> I finally got one, and I feel fucking amazing. Well, uh, yeah, I hope you're proud of yourself because this has happened on a fucking pre-show. <laughs> and when it happens on a pre-show, it sadly is. I don't. So I don't need you to clip this. I don't need you to clip this. I just Logic, need to acknowledge that it I happened. heard what you did. You should be ashamed of yourself. Oh, we have a myth. <laughs> I don't. I don't need to be ashamed. I have the pain to remind me what I've done. You should be both <laughs> ashamed and very proud. Everybody <laughs> hurts. Hey, I hope Wait, you're proud we are talking about what I did just now, right? Gotta go up my nose. Yeah. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> I, Jesse, what the fuck went up your nose? My soda. <laughs> Miff just, I, like, Miff just dropped into the toilet. Something and it goes up your nose. Oh, God. If you laugh while you're drinking something, it will eventually go. Up, it'll accidentally go up your nose. That's what happened to me. Yeah. Also, now I've got that out of the way. I'll be back because I need to go grab myself a cold one because can't do a stream without it. <laughs> God damn logic! Oh, my poor nosey! <laughs> I'm gonna be breathing Dr. Pepper the whole time now. Oh shit, Derek the Brony actually brought up a point. The All Stars version of Super Mario Brothers 2 at least lets you have inf uh, infinite continues. Uh, because in the original NES, if you get a game over, you're sent all the way back to the beginning of the game, and I don't want to do that. Oh. <laughs> That's better. <Whew>. Excuse me. <laughs> uh, I needed that. I just re realized oh. something. I don't have uh. pre-show on the actual screen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, I've been uh, I've been kind of unprepared. Again. Well, this is something that, this is old memory lane, eh? Yep. So, yeah, uh, back to what I was saying. So, yeah, uh, The Lion King 2, it took me a really long time to work with because that one actually had a lot more to cover, and I wanted to make sure that I wanted to cohesively explain everything and not just, you know, jump at different parts. I mean, there are some areas uh, where um, I jumped to, but it was, I tried to make it as natural as I could. Like, okay, so let's talk about this. You know, cat, one of the things that's a bit of a pet peeve of mine, and I'm not looking down on anybody who uses this method, it's when they categorize everything. Like, oh, let's talk about the story. Okay, now let's talk about the characters. Let's talk about this. I'm not the type of person who enjoys doing that, but I know there's those who do it. And the reason being is... Part, sometimes when you discuss the story, you have to discuss parts of the characters. And when discussing parts of the characters, you're dis, uh, discussing how they're feeling, what their motivation is, and how it all correlates. They're all connected. And if you try to categorize them, 
if if I do it, I would just have too much of a hard time. So that's really just a pet peeve of mine. Also, I just think it's a really cheesy thing to do. But again, I'm not looking down on anybody else that does it. Um, <laughs> I will say this much. I'm more than halfway through the script of The Lion King 1 and a half. No pun intended. And I've already <laughs> jotted down a couple of notes for The Lion Guard Return of the Roar. Oh, boy. <sighs> yeah, that'll be fun to talk about. Nice. Upon doing though, upon doing so, I still have to binge watch the rest of the Lion Guard. So that way, if I like oh point God. out any issues, some people say, "Oh, they explain that in the show. They explain this and such." Like you know, that's gonna have you know. Oh yeah. Yeah. But, um, I actually am already fully aware of what happens. I logic. <laughs> Perfectly timed. Logical black um, cherry. No, this... thank you. <laughs> I am already aware of the um of what happens uh at the end of the Lion Guard, so I'm already up to date about what happened in the whole series. Doesn't somebody get married? Yeah, Josh and Ari. Yeah. No, I'm not with the Lion Guard. <laughs> oh oh well... no, um Kion does become uh Spoilers. Does... Yeah, something okay, does happen. That's hundred and eight degree out of yeah, that one. Yeah. Yeah, I I'm still I still have that. to catch up but, to all this stuff. There's already a couple of hints that I'm able to piece together, but up until that point, I want to kind of leave myself to find out by watching the series itself <laughs> and not make any assumptions or you know create these unrealistic expectations. Well, now I just feel like yeah. an ass. It's like I don't know about any of what I just said. By the way, it's like my little sister was watching a clip, and I don't know. I guess in passing, I kind of got an idea of what was happening but it's probably yeah who cares about spoilers about lion guard i do not me yeah, you dicks yeah respect, <laughs> respect the rule guys even if respect it's a no e spoiler rule it's like even if it's not the best piece of lion king media you need to remember who you're talking to golden fox breathes sweats and bleeds Lion King. <laughs> yeah, pretty so. much. Like, I keep myself as level-headed as possible. Like, I'm not going to lie. There were times when, at some points, I was pissed um, at the... <laughs> at least uh, with the pilot. Yeah. Um, but afterwards, I got over that. And at one point, I used to be on the hate wagon with the Lion King 1.5. And, and there's actually some people <laughs> out there who don't like 1.5. But I also know that there's people who love 1.5. I think it's a fun movie. Um, it's enjoyable to look back on, and for the most part, it's you know it's an entry. It's an entry that I'm willing to accept. You know, it's there. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it did its job. So. Yeah. Uh, but with the Lion Guard, <laughs> so far, I really don't have much to complain about. Like some people say that there are contradictions with uh, the show. The biggest contradiction that I have is with Kiara because. In Lion King 2, she wasn't all that fond of being the future queen, which I think oh, yeah. was a great contrast. But in The Lion Guard, oh, she's embracing that she's going to be queen. And it's the complete polar opposite. Like, it, did, did, did the writers yeah. lobotomize her? Yeah. Like, that, that was an I will, issue I did. I will did agree. Take. And, like, I guess there is something to be said about how, like, all of these particular changes in these characters. It's just like, oh, so, you know, they just went down a different timeline because, you know, there's also things like Kovu. It's like, where's he? <laughs> where's well, like, the you, banished lion? I mean, I, 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 okay, this is just a simple yes or no question. No spoilers. Do they ever explain where Kion was the whole time during Lion King 2? Because I saw him right out of fucking nowhere. And yeah, they do. Like, I haven't it. seen any of it, but I can say with confidence that they didn't plan it for any of that. They oh, will, wow. but they do explain it, so don't worry about oh, it. Oh, really? It does get explained further down, closer to in season three. They do explain what happened to Kaya during the whole event. Uh, so, okay. Don't worry. Yeah, so I am going to continue watching the series, so that way I'll be a lot more prepared on what to say about the pilot, because the best way for me to talk about it is not necessarily it's aging, because obviously it's aged like milk, but no, it's it, it has to do Ugh. with the presentation and the execution and why it did not hold up very well. 
Um, I do, True. I do plan on saying briefly that I have watched the series, and despite the fact that it's for a younger demographic and there are a lot of contradictions and such, for a show that's aimed for little kids, it does a job very well in having a sense of um, adventure and exploration. And having a lot of variety of characters. Like, there's one leopard character who looks really badass. Like, okay, I like where they're going with this. And seeing that little kids are watching this, they'll definitely get a kick out of it. And I think that's something to be grateful. Oh, yeah, I know which leopard you're talking about now, yeah. Uh, the one between the leopard and the okapi. Yeah, the, um, I forget his name. I, I forgot his name, too. It's like, about. I had to look back on it again. But, yeah, I, I know which one you're talking about, because... That one was, I like the voice for that one. Whoever voiced that dude, good job. You made him very fit, that fit very well for the character. Yep. All right. Here we go. Uh, I gotta update this. Also, um, Crimson Rain, who has not seen Has Been Hotel as of late? Yeah, I'm gonna save that for the podcast in the future. Yes. Yes. Mm-hmm. I want he to watch is, the also, real I want quick, to watch this, that because I've got so many things to say about it. It's like just real quick, that podcast is the finale and has been hotel, right? That, that um that podcast well the podcast talked about the trailer, <clears throat> the um the the finale of Friendship is Magic and discussing horror movies. Yeah. Okay. Is that one already been? It's already up on YouTube. Dang it! Yeah, it already came on. You're I late. was hoping, like, I was hoping for a podcast where I'd actually know like a majority of the things you'd be talking about, which is one of the reasons that even when offered, I didn't show up in the stream party. All right, well, um, because I did just didn't know enough. <laughs> all right, well, I think it's time I get started on um, getting straight to the game. I've already updated the uh, title card and everything. Or at least I did. <laughs> Give it time. Yeah. <sighs> oh, Golden, did you uh, did you saw the tweet I made that I posted uh, no, I a while haven't. back during Halloween? My daughter made a huge haul of candy. <laughs> oh. <laughs> she had like um. <laughs> she was. We were like going down the street, further down from um, further down the blocks that close to where we went. We were because um, the street we were in talk about sticks in the mud. Nobody had any lights on. There was nobody in that in our street that had any form of Halloween related stuff up. Nobody was partaking for that street. It's like, well, what a bunch of sticks in the mud. Oh. Sheesh, killjoys. Oh wait, Where's I got your Halloween spirit. Hang on, I gotta update one more thing. Oh. <laughs> Whoops. Whoops. But, um, we then decided to go down to the other blocks behind us, and, um, holy crap, we made a haul. Like, two of them were giving huge candy bars. Hmm. Like, Twix and Hershey's and all kinds of stuff. Like, god dang, these are like candy bars you get in rich areas. <laughs> All right, I'm so serious. I'm updating the information, so that way I'll be ready to start the game. And you know me, sometimes I like to um, have a pocket of silence and give out a little intro. Uh, 